It must be brilliant to be involved with a horse like Dawn Approach. Uh, it is Tina, yes. Um, he's a lovely horse and obviously has a lot of class as well. And uh, it's very nice to come here and, and win an award as prestigious as the Cartier. And it must feel so special because not only do you train him, but you also bred him as well and owned him before, obviously, Godolphin. Uh, yes, well, that adds to the whole occasion. But on the day of the races, I'm a trainer first. And it's really only when I'm on the way home that uh, I begin to think, well, I have the dam at home and, you know, a few half-sisters and what have you. But uh, it, it's, it's lovely to have a horse like that and to have his dam and have her in fold to the same sire. That sort of adds to the occasion. Definitely. And he won champion two-year-old Colt. Do you think he'll be a 2,000 guineas horse? Uh, well, that's the aim at the moment, anyway. Um, we're pretty sure that he'll stay a mile well, and uh, hopefully he'll improve from two to three and uh, give a good account of himself next year. Um, we'll do everything we can to, to get him there. Do you think you'll go for the derby with him? Uh, that's kind of doubtful at the moment, but uh, we'll see how he gets on over a mile and maybe even a mile and a quarter first, anyway. Winning the Dewhurst with him was, was the highlight, no doubt about it. And uh, tonight's a highlight also. You're very excited about him for next season? Uh, yes, and it's you know lovely to have a horse as, as relaxed and as easy to train as he is. He's a very, very sound horse and uh, has a great constitution, takes everything in his stride, relaxes very well in his races and... Uh, well, he's probably the complete racehorse. How does it feel to have been crowned champion trainer for the first time? Well, I just shook Richard Hannon's hand and I said, why do you have to drop that cup? It's, it's spent now. So it wasn't my fault. I said, look, I'll polish it up and send it back to you next year. And um, you win an award tonight with the few champion three-year-old filly. She was, she's a very, very classy filly and she was unlucky not to win the Oaks and she was unlucky at the Breeders' Cup as well. Yeah, I think it's a fair comment. And, uh, you know, she's done very well, but things haven't flowed away. But there's nothing like consistency, and she has that. I think she'll be bigger and stronger next year. And uh, she, she's got a great mind on her, and uh, there's a lot to look forward to. And what's been the highlight of the year for you? I'd have to say uh, winning five races at Royal Ascot and uh, winding up top stable there for all of us, for all of the owners and the horses and the, and the staff. That, without doubt, was our high point. And I think it's our showcase meeting, and if you can get lucky and be leading trainer there, as clear as we were, that's something you dream of someday, one day, possibly doing again. The Breeders' Cup, I mean, I used to train in America. What do you think of the changes that have been made over there that have been in the press recently? Sort of more races, it's less competitive, and the banning of lay six. Well, first of all, I think too many races. I think it's got thinned out, and I think that's a problem. I think it needs to get a more core, greater core to it. Secondly, I feel on the, on the issue of medication, on Lasix, that uh, I think it's probably right in the long run to run without it. Why? We want a purity of a breed. We don't want a contaminated breed. And that is a hugely deep issue, which we could discuss for two hours. And then finally, of course, from our point of view, they've gone back to dirt. And I didn't much like the dirt track there. I, I'm very experienced of racing on dirt in America, having trained there for 11 years. I thought it was a, a track that favoured horses that went fast early and finished slow and no one could finish or close them. They couldn't get hold of it. It was deep and loose. I didn't like it. Uh, and so I feel that was a retrograde step. Uh, certainly when we raced on the synthetic, for us Europeans, we felt it was uh, world championships because we could race turf horses as well as dirt horses on it. And I feel, uh, quite frankly, it's taken a backward step.
So you must be quite sad to see the end of 2012 because it was a fantastic season for you. Yeah, I mean, I just wanted to carry on really and it was uh, fantastic. Uh, I was very fortunate to work for a fantastic boss in John Gosling. It's a fantastic team behind it all and, uh, you know, they prepared the horses absolutely brilliantly and, um, you know, I rode some great horses as well. So uh, I've got to be very thankful to everybody who supported me uh, this year and, uh, you know, it's... Uh, it's been great, but uh, you know, uh, a jockey can't do it without getting on good horses. So uh, I'm very grateful, and um, you know, I just hope we can continue next year. What's been the highlight of your year? I mean, I, I, it's hard really to pick one out because, um, because you know, there's been so many. So, but uh, Royal Ascot stands out. I mean, it was a fantastic week, five winners and some really good winners as well. And uh, you know, John ended up. Uh, Obviously, champion trainer overall, but as well at Royal Ascot. So it was, um, it's, that was a fantastic week to go there with with, with that with uh, with that amount of winners and just having having a, having a brilliant week. So that was uh, that's one of the highlights that stand out. I know you mentioned that your bosses won the trainers championship. Will you be chasing the jockeys championship next year? Well, I think every jockey out there goes out with the intention of riding as many winners as they can, and uh, you can't say that you're gonna go for the Jockeys Championship because I mean I, I try and ride as many winners as I can and you know Richard Hughes won it this year deserved it he, he's been a brilliant jockey he's, he's a, he is a brilliant jockey and he'll be hard to beat again next year so you'll have Ryan Moore as well and there'll be a few others getting involved so but I'll try my best and see where I end up and it's always been an ambition of mine but Camborne has come from the clouds oh what an amazing turn of foot here Camborne and William Buick who's going to go one ahead in the Jockeys title and Camborne streaks away Another win for Buick, a remarkable win from the back, last of first, in second Hammerfest and Harrison. It was um, a great privilege to be involved with the Black Caviar crew that were here, all 150 of her most loyal supporters and owners and friends and family. It was a, a, great, a great event to be involved with, to be honest, and um, you know, we, we were really well looked after by our Scott and you had a great day. It was fantastic to have the horse over here and, and to have her win the race. <laughs> And um, she was the first non-European horse to win an award tonight. She won champion sprinter. Yeah, no, I mean, the owners are, are thrilled that they've they've won this award. And, you know, they, they do recognise how much it means for a, an international horse to win, you know, what is a European award or what we consider a European award. And, you know, it really is testament to the to the horse that, that she has won it and, you know, how fantastic a horse she is 22 wins 22 runs it's fantastic and is peter moody going to bring her back for the autumn uh, he's he's going to see how she copes in training she'll she's had her her rest and rehabilitation and will go to the, the water walking farm um with with peter uh, up there peter clark and see how she copes with that and then down to the stables at caulfield and if she's right they'll run her if she's not right and not 100% then she she won't be running. Black Caviar's in front. Here comes Moonlight Cloud on the stand side with Restia Darjon, a twin French assault. Black Caviar needs the line. He's easing up on her and he's just scraped in. Oh, he did. He blew it. But Black Caviar, she's still unbeat. I think she's...